Hey guys and welcome to another Football Manager video. This is the latest in a series of videos I've been making that consider in detail the recruitment of players in a specific position. In this video we'll be recruiting a centre back for our squad at QPR. This is our third year in the save and somehow in our first season up in the Premier League we find ourselves in second place. This centre back signing will be the last transfer of the winter transfer window. We will consider what we're looking for, why we're looking for it and use a data driven approach including some code in Python to try to make a solid addition to our squad. Let's get into it. So why do we need a centre back? Well on the screen here we've got calculated some weighted attribute scores which attempt to calculate how good each of the players in the squad are at filling the centre back role in our tactic. We have two players who clearly lead the field, Estev at 14.1 and Howard Bullis at 14. We then have a step down to the others. If you'd like to use the Python code that I use to calculate these scores, there are links in the description and other videos in my channel set out the process and provide how-to guides on how to get this set up in your own save. If you look at the average rating that our centre-backs have been getting in the first half of the season, Estev and Harwood Bellis stand out also as our best defenders. Along with Comas, they've played the most minutes. And then there's a step down to Medic and Silva and Lawrence, who have played fewer minutes as the backup. Field, one of our defensive midfielders, provides some depth at the centre-back position. So there are a few things that stand out when looking at this. The first is that Comas, whilst playing a lot of minutes and an important part of our first 11 at the moment, is a stride behind Estev and Howard Bellis in quality. We can see that from the average rating, but we can also see it from the key headers per 90 here on the right-hand side of the screen, where Comas is clearly below Howard Bellis and Estev, despite his role in the very centre of the defence, I would have expected Comas to have a higher key headers per 90 than Harwood Bellis and Estev, but in fact, his has been considerably lower. We can also see poor morale for Medic and Lawrence, both of whom are unhappy and have been asking for more playing time. So looking at this, it seems to me that there's a clear opportunity to improve the squad. Comas, who is our weakest starter, could move to be a backup. He would provide good backup, not only at the centre-back position, but also in defensive midfield. Meanwhile, Medic and Lawrence, who are unhappy and impacting morale, can be moved on. To make this work, we'd need to recruit one new starter, preferably a player who can play in the middle of our back three, a commanding aerial presence at the level of Estev or Howard Bellis, or ideally better. The source of level those guys are at does appear to be similar to where the players of Aston Villa are. We've been using Aston Villa as a benchmark club for a while, as that's a club that regularly are on the brink of or just qualify for European football. Resources wise, we're in a decent position to make a centre back signing, the third and final transfer of our winter transfer window. The first signing was Brandon Williams, a relatively inexpensive backup right sided wing back, and that transfer is detailed in a video that I've posted on this channel. The second signing was making Udogi's loan move permanent. We had a 9 million clause for that, which we've just exercised. The resource position isn't super strong, but we are establishing ourselves as a Premier League club. And so we do have the resources here if we want to make one more signing as centre-back. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to use one of the filters. Uh, and this is downloadable in the description of this video. Uh, I've tweaked the levels to be what I think are Premier League levels. And we have got seven players uh, found by this. We, well, it's still seven, I think, if we... Uh, remove loan players, just make sure we're on the all attributes screen. And then what I'll do is uh, I will take these players out of the data on these players out of Football Manager and put them into my code on Python that I use to calculate weighted attribute scores. And here they are. So just sort that by centre backs. So Looking at this list, we've got a we've got the seven, same seven centre backs uh, that were on the player search screen, and the scores range from 14.3 at the top, and then obviously go down. And we've got a couple of players clearly in the sort of 14 and 14 plus level, which just on the face of it, before we look at anything else, might be upgrades uh, to our squad, and might be upgrades to the sort of level that we're seeing in other clubs who are contenders for European football. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put all these players into the shortlist. By the way, just worth noticing at the very bottom here, Loic Williams, if you've, if you've been watching any of my prior videos, when we were in the championship, the scoring system showed that Williams might be a sensible player to bring in to try and survive in 
the Premier League. I think now our club has probably progressed beyond the level where we would look at Williams. But it's interesting to see that he's still appearing on the filters. Okay, so we're now in game and we've got our seven centre backs. Uh, and quite simply, we'll just send them all off for scouting and then see what it looks like when they come back. While we wait for the scouts to come back, interesting to see this screen come up on Comas. Comas, you remember, is the player that we're thinking of upgrading on. Leave, keeping him in the squad, but, but bringing him from being a starter down to being one of the backups. And it says here, I think he's a decent player and now currently playing it close to his full potential. So quite interesting to see that. And it's sort of a bit of validation, I think, of, of, of the thinking we were doing before. We brought this guy Comas in for four and a half million. He has been a decent player in the Premier League, albeit one I think we can now look to upgrade on. I think if this value in the sort of 20 odd million, anybody were to come in at this sort of value, I think that would be an excellent sale. I'm not going to try to force that now, but it may well be that opportunity creates itself, at which point maybe we'll be in a place where that makes sense. Just before the scouts come back, let's take a moment to think about what we're looking for from a central defender. We've got some weightings on the left of this screen on what the more important attributes are, or at least might be. I don't think this is hyper scientific, but it's an attempt to give some guidance on what the more important attributes might be. So you can see acceleration and pace there, composure as well. But one thing I think I notice when I look at centre backs is it's not really just a question of taking those three attributes and then off we go. I think this is one of the positions where being well-rounded is important. And you can see that on the left side of the screen by the number of weightings that are in the 50s, uh, 55s. And you can see things like heading and positioning. And I think these things are important marking also. And so in the code that I used to calculate the scoring system, which is in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, I include those attributes uh, as well. And I also include one that the left hand side of the screen, the weightings, does not focus on heavily, which is tackling. I just can't get comfortable with the idea that tackling is not an important attribute for a central defender. Uh, same idea with jumping reach, really. When I'm actually looking at these numbers and not looking to be a slave to the calculations, I think jumping reach is one of the numbers I look at in particular. All right, so the scouts are back. And here are the scout reports for the seven centre backs that we were looking at earlier. And it's worth noticing that in this view that I've got here, the attributes that we were looking at on the weightings are roughly ordered from left to right. So acceleration, pace, composure, and then jumping reach. And then what I'd say is described as the well-rounded attributes in this second batch a bit further to the right. You'll remember that the scoring system viewed Diassi and Osterwalder as the clear leaders among this group, with Kusanu and Mukundi as the next down with Rob Holding too. And looking at this, you can see that the attributes for Diassi and Osterwalder are actually different. And the scoring system is calculating them as being good players for slightly different reasons. Osterwalder has 18 pace and 16 jumping reach. Diassi is not as impressive in those attributes, although he's clearly a Premier League standard. He is more well-rounded. You can see that from this next batch of attributes being higher. Things like heading 16, tackling 15, marking 15, bravery 15. So Diassi is more of a well-rounded centre-back than Osterwalder on the face of it looking at these attributes. Now comparing the two, and you can see that the scouts are of the view that both these guys could clearly be a starter in our team. The hidden ratings on both seem to be pretty good, particularly for Diassi, who has a dark green for consistency. The economics on Diassi look better. He's got a lower upfront cost, reflecting the fact he's transfer listed, and lower wage demands by the looks of it. Polygon-wise, we can see what we saw in the table earlier. Diassi is more well-rounded. Osterwalder is really impressive physically. At this stage in the save, we don't have the resources or the reputation to buy a centre-back that can do both. We have to pick one or the other here. I think I'm leaning towards Diassi here. He's got better height. He's got better heading. He's a better marker, better tackling. For the middle of a back three, I think this is the guy for us. If I was looking for a left-footed centre-back for the left side of our back three, I think Osterwald would be pretty compelling. But we've already got one of those in the stev. So for the time being, I think this is a relatively simple decision recruitment-wise. I think we go after this assy and then we see how we get on. The step down to Kasunu looks pretty obvious, although I would say that Kasunu, uh, if that really is the value, would be an outstanding transfer from a value point of view. But I don't think that's what we're looking to do now. I think we should just progress with this assy and see how we get on.
And just on the point about Osterwalder as the left-sided centre-back in a back three, and comparing him to Estev, who's in our squad and doing well, you can see that they are similar profiles. Osterwalder perhaps is a little bit better, but right now that's not the position we're looking to change, and I think Estev's doing just fine. All right, so on this Disassi, there is interest from another club, Espanyol. So I think the sooner we get in there, the better. And the question is, do we try to make an instalments deal here to make it cheaper? I actually don't think we need to. I think the economics of the current position are fine. I think we just crack on and see if we can bring the player in here. Okay, so look, he's interested. Let's see if we can negotiate a contract. Important player is fine. He will be an important player. Uh, see if we can get rid of the release clause. See if we can get rid of this. All I'm doing here is putting the bottom of this range. I don't have enormous amounts of science for this. It just needs to be enough to get the deal done and not too much that it'll break our wage structure. I've just agreed a higher wage for Udogi. Okay, 83. There we go. If we do get this deal done at 83,000 a week, that'll be the highest wage in our squad. I've just agreed 62,000 for Udogi. So we are starting to increase the wages we pay, but that's not a bad thing. I think it's just evidence of the progress that we're making as we become an established Premier League club. Okay, here we go. Disassi has accepted the contract and the deal is done. And just comparing Disassi to Comas, who will now become a backup as opposed to a starter in our squad, you can see we lose a little bit in ball playing capability and vision, but we upgrade everywhere else. This feels like a solid upgrade and a player that's going to improve that central part of our back three for a good few seasons to come. And now if we just look across the squad, I think we've got a, a decent solid upgrade at the center back position. That feels like the right five to go forward to fill those three places for this second half of the season. We've got a couple of players to sell here, which may or may not um, come through in this transfer window. But if, if, they, uh, if we can't sell them, I don't think we'll keep them in the first team squad. I think they'll go into the reserves. Uh, as we look to to move them on because I don't think we want their low morale in our first team squad. Uh, and I think that completes our business for the for the winter transfer window. So I think what we'll do from here is sim forward now to the to the summer uh, and let's see how we get on. Okay, so now we're at the end of the season and I'm absolutely astonished by this result. I really didn't expect that we would stay towards the top of the table as the season would go on. I thought with injuries and all the rest of it, um, it would tail off, but no, here we are. We finished the season uh, in second place. So a great outcome, very pleased with that. As for De Sassi, it's been a pretty strange one. His average rating has been low, 6.6. Um, obviously that's low. It's lower than it was in the first season of this save, where obviously he wasn't in, in our club, but he was in the Premier Division and he got a much better rating. And it does make me wonder about whether his adaptability score, which is hidden in the game, just simply isn't very good. You can't see that on this screen, which is the screen that gives you guidance on the hidden ratings, but I just wonder if it's below where we thought it was. I'm not too worried about the Sassy going into next season. Yes, he's got a low average rating, but if you look at the key headers per 90, which is one of the things that the previous central centre-back Comas wasn't doing very well at, you can see that De Sassi is a major upgrade there. And the team seems to be functioning well, like I say, second in the league. So even though looking at the average rating, this second half of the season for De Sassi has not been great since he joined us, I still feel pretty confident it'll be good for us next season and in the seasons to come. Looking at it sorted by minutes now for the whole season, we can look at some of the other players we've signed in, some of the videos I've been doing recently. Williams, who we signed as a, as a right-sided wing-back to be a backup, hasn't really seen the, any opportunity to play. He's only played 255 minutes. The decision to bring in a guy as a backup actually has proved to be reasonably good because Mam Keogh, the starting right-sided centre-back, has played 3,400 minutes and did reasonably well with a decent average rating. Then if we sort it by goals and then look at some of the forwards we were signing, which was outlined again in, in one of my previous videos, we can see Kaufman, who we signed to lead the line, has done pretty well. 0.56 expected goals by 90 is a pretty good return uh, and I think we can be pretty pleased with the forwards who signed. Delap, who came in on loans, done reasonably well. Domina, who was signed as a, a young Argentinian player, is now aged 20, has been excellent. Uh, and so I think we've done reasonably well with the forwards. But when Delap and Enzola, who have been with us on loan, leave at the end of the season, I think in the next transfer window, and now with European football available, uh, which will hopefully attract 
uh, more players to be interested in joining us, I think we'll be upgrading at that position again. And so just a final look at the squad as we consider how to go into next season. Next season will be an established Premier League club with European football. The guys we've had in on loan that have been filling the squad will leave us. And some of these starters will become backups. Quite who we bring in to replace them is something we'll have to think about as we come into the next window. I hope you found that video interesting. I have to say I'm finding this save very good. And uh, FM24, it's, it's beta, has been really excellent. So looking forward to the full game as it gets released next week. There are other similar videos on this channel that focus on specific positions uh, for player recruitment. We've done uh, strikers so far and wing backs. And hit subscribe if you'd like to see others. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.